What's up, y'all? Mark Smith, JBS Training Group. For the longest time, 556 five, guns were very single purpose in nature for, for a lot of people, right? Not not everybody. Um, but like, you know, we got our we got our distance guns, we got our precision guns, we got our go fast guns, we got our entry guns, we got our patrol guns, you know, and, and everything in between. Um, and, and that's cool. But everybody's always wanting to know about the one that can do it all, right? Um, so before I start this, man, I'm gonna hit you with this. I did not pay for this rifle, okay? Uh, it, and I also did not ask for it. Uh, it was given to me as a, you know, a, a gift from, from some of my very good friends uh, up in New Hampshire. They said, hey man, we want you to run one of these things. Um, will you? And I said, yeah, sure. And so I get it. And full disclosure, man, and I, and, and you know, um, I know that them boys know what's going on, right? I know they know what's happening. I know they know what they're talking about, but <clears throat> I didn't expect anything crazy. You know what I mean? Um, I thought, yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to have a really good gas gun. Um, just like, just like, you know, this here, really good gas gun. And this here, really good gas gun. There's a, there's a number of people that make them. Um, but then I started shooting this thing, man. And it, and it's a little, it's a little different. So what do I love about the Ridgeline RD15? Well, number one, uh, I'm a little bit biased because one of the things I love is that it comes from my friends, right? And I love supporting my friends more than anybody else. Uh, and I ain't sorry about it. So there's that. However, uh, just because my friends make something and just because they give it to me free don't mean they get good reviews just just, just because emotions or whatever, right? You can, you can believe me if you want to uh, or not. But everything I'm about to tell you is true. Everything I'm about to tell you was not bought. Uh, and everything I'm about to tell you is from experience. If there ever was going to be truly one gun to do it all, it's sitting right here, man. This thing is freaking great. It's it's so good. Like I didn't I didn't think it was going to be as good as it is, but it's so good. So start from kind of going from the muzzle back. I chose to put a uh, a KGM suppressor on it uh, per uh, some of those dudes up there's recommendation. They've had really good luck with KGM cans, especially in conjunction with this rifle. So uh, it just made sense. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, do do what the manufacturer suggests, right? And I slapped uh, one of their fly shotters on there. This is the R556 from KGM, which is a great can. Uh, not crazy expensive, and it'll, it'll do everything you want. It's a ratchet uh, design, right? And once it's on, it's on. Uh, I have found really good, um, consistent uh, performance out of that, so I really like that. Another uh, thing that I noticed immediately when I started shooting this thing suppressed was that it didn't shoot like it was suppressed. It shot like it was unsuppressed, and then when you put a suppressor on it, nothing changed. So I start digging in on, uh, you know, some of them guys up there, what's going on with that? And they're like, oh, we got a different gas system on that thing, man. That, that, that's, a, that's a whole different gas. It's not just a standard carbine or a mid -length system. We did some different stuff. Now, I ain't no gunsmith. I'm just a marksmith. So I ain't fixing to try to explain to you what they did. I don't know, right? I just know that it is different. Um, so if you want to know more about the rifle, they got plenty of videos up about how they're putting it together and how they're doing all this stuff that I'm telling you about. Um, but proof barrel right really like proof barrels um it's a it's a barrel that is also not prioritized to be as super lightweight as possible um issues with with super lightweight pencil barrels are are you know quite quite a few um specifically when i uh, stick a can on the end of them and they get hot over a course of fire and when you got a heavy suppressor on the end of a 16 inch barrel that's a pencil barrel it starts to droop when it gets hot and we get point of impact shift and just all kind of stuff that precision shooting uh you should not should not be doing right uh so i like that they said hey man like ain't nobody humping this thing through the freaking you know uh can do you know hindu kush for for three days right so like let's put a barrel on the sun gun i like that um the uh rail barrel at attachment system that uh that's going on here is truly proprietary and uh, i commend them on doing something new uh this is this is truly something new um so I, I, you know, been been really excited for a long time to to kind of look at what they were doing with this thing, and and I can tell you, I ain't never seen nothing else like it. So, um, right off the bat, the the rail itself is Arca all the way down the bottom, right? But then at the back here, it kind of goes beyond, and you probably can't see this. I'll get some videos up uh, where you can see it, but it goes beyond the front of the upper receiver. Upper receiver is also proprietary; it extends farther forward than typical, <laughs> and they they bring that arca up under it uh, as an as an anti rotational tab built into the system. Also, the way that this thing attaches uh, to the way that the barrel attaches to the receiver 
and the rail attaches to the receiver is uh, is super wild and I really like it. Um, why does it matter? So it's very, very common to see dudes with guns like this that they're using for precision gas gun events or DMR, whatever you want to call it. They have a gun that looks like this, right? So they take that dead gum bipod, run it all the way out to the end of the gun uh, because they don't ever really use it anyway and they just want it out of their way. But if they don't have one on the gun, then they can't put it on the internet and say that it's a, it's a DM gun. So I'm just kidding, man. I'm just clowning y'all. Y'all calm down. Uh, they're running all the way to the end of the gun, typically so that as they're uh, working this thing, it's not in their way, right? They can get full full grip on it, whatever. I don't care why you do it. Just understand that when you begin to take bipods on conventional style rifles and you put them all the way up here, and then uh, all of a sudden something happens, say I got a, I got a high angle shot, I got a, I got a uh, low angle shot, I'll run that thing up here. Uh, or tripods, I'll run it up here to be able to get that pivot point to get that done. Next thing you know, we're, we're missing a little bit and we're not sure why. Well, that, that is called point of impact shift that's coming from the pressure variances that you're putting into the rail. The rail is attached to the barrel nut, is attached to the barrel flange, is attached to the receiver extension, so on and so forth. And so we start changing pressures into the gun. We can potentially start changing pressures into the barrel, which, as you might have guessed, changes outputs of the projectile. Um, so we start to see point impact shift. If you hadn't ever seen point impact shift, uh, rest assured it exists. If you have a conventionally made AR-15, you just may not have seen the environment that promotes it. Um, go out of the range, zero this son of a gun, shoot me a group off the front of the uh, rail with a bipod, off the back of the rail with a bipod, off magazine prone, and you'll watch it kind of move around a little bit, assuming you can shoot well enough to see a group shift around. Um, the fact that they eliminated that, and I do mean eliminated it, uh, with this rail and this this system makes my heart so happy man so happy um I, I i cannot make this gun shift um it's it's great that's all i got uh moving on back man really incredible upper and lower receiver fit like the tolerance is i i've never seen a gun that fits this this well uh together so um i've never actually tried this i'm gonna try it live on the camera with you so i'm gonna pull these pins out and we're going to see if what I think is real. So the pins are gone. All right, I'm going to flip this sucker over. I'm going to hold it by the trigger guard. Nope, didn't work. But very, very tight fit, man. Like incredibly tight fit. So to get this thing on here, what I have to do is I have to go into the front first and into there and then kind of squeeze it together, pull down on it, and I can typically set those pins. Uh, once you've got it together, absolutely no upper and lower wobble. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Um... Controls, so full disclosure, if there's one thing I hate about this gun, it's the controls, man. I, I wouldn't have done it this way, but ain't nobody, you know, asking Mark about what, what he would do. Then that's fine. I got it. Uh, right off the bat, I hate this oversized mag catch. Um, now, happy meal for you and for me. As soon as I get done making this video, I'm taking that sucker off because it'll take the standard magazine release button just fine. And you ain't got to worry about it, right? But what I am finding is, especially when the gun starts to get heavy, so I got uh, four to 20s on top of it, bipods, I'm holding bags, I got suppressors, etc. My index point is normally near the fence of this uh, magazine release, right? And on a standard gun, I, I got no problem with it. But what I get with this gun is, is every now and then I'll slip into that oversized button uh, and once in dry fire and once at an actual match, I've inadvertently dropped the magazine. So that, that thing's got to go, man. Uh, also, I don't like the lack of an ambidextrous bolt release. I wish that would have been on there. Um, it ain't nothing I can't work around, man, but, but I wish it would have been on there. Um, I think that instead of an ambidextrous mag release, right, um, and, and prioritizing that, I would have liked a little different bolt catch, maybe a little bit more bias forward or bias rearward, or maybe modular where you could choose you know pick your poison and then give me a bolt catch over on this other side and make the mag catch normal sized uh or as they did make the mag catch something where i can swap it out myself if i don't like it so i'm uh, glad they did that uh it comes with a bolt carrier group that is uh their own bolt carrier group i, I do not know who's making it uh but it is slick coated with like the super slick black coating um and I really like it so far, assuming that it, that it holds up, and I'm sure it will because they test these things, man. Um, but it's very, very slick, doesn't require much oil, and runs in pretty austere conditions. Now, that in conjunction with this A5 system, in conjunction with this gas system, makes this gun incredibly awesome to shoot, man. Um, extremely minimal recoil, like your, your muzzle brakes and stuff like that. You don't, like, it, 
you don't even need any of that. Like you put a suppressor on it, it runs great. It's freaking fantastic. I love it. Um, and so really, really glad that they did that stuff. Uh, comes from them with uh, with castle nut staking in two spots, uh, one in each each slot here. Um, comes with Badger Safety Selector. Comes with Geisley SSAE Trigger. Beautiful. Um, out of the box, this thing's ready to rock and roll, man. Uh, comes with, uh, I think they ship it with a Magpul stock. I, I can't remember exactly. Uh, this is the, the stock that I just chose to stick on it. This is a Magpul CTR with a uh, cheek riser, air socket butt pad adapter, and a little bag rider. Um, you don't need all that crap. I, I just got it on there. Um, other than that, man, uh, I, I can't stress enough how much I love that very, very easily this gun can become an entry gun, right? Like a room gun. Uh, I can I can maneuver in and around corners, tight spaces, and things. It's not that big of a deal. And then also uh, dual purpose roll very quickly. Uh, we can go to shooting some, some, some tiny stuff if we have to, man. Um, the precision that this gun is, is capable of is very likely going to shock some of you. Uh, I, I find that a whole lot of guys that, that are running 5.56 five, gas guns that are kind of dual role like this have, have honestly never really experienced what something like this can do. I am a uh, pretty big stickler when it comes to calling something a standard or, or saying a thing as a statement. Uh, for instance, this is a one MOA gun. Okay, well, does that mean that it can always do one MOA gun stuff? Or does that mean that the one group out of the 37 you shot that day was sub one MOA? And so you go on the internet and tell people that it's a one MOA gun. Nine out of 10 is the standard, right? So not 90%. Um, and so if you can't do it nine out of 10 times, play a you can't do it. So when you say a gun is a one MOA gun, I expect you to be able to do sub one minute groups with it nine out of 10 times, right? Otherwise don't say that, okay? This gun is a one MOA gun, okay? Um, with, with, the, with good ammo, uh, matter of fact, to this day, on Cotton Ball Cloud Day, bipod bag or modified prone on a bench this gun has never never shot a group that was over one minute and that includes and is not limited to up to 10 round uh groups um this thing just shoots 10 round groups back to back to back to back to back that are that are 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.7 0 0.8 it just bounces around um this truly is a precision rocket and and i really really like it and i'm really 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 excited about it and I can't wait to see what else they do with it, man. Um, this this ain't a sales pitch, dude. It's just the truth. I don't get no royalties from the, from them dudes. Uh, they don't they don't pay me no royalties to, to tell you guys this stuff, man. Uh, they don't even know I'm making this video. Matter of fact, um, but my experience with the majority of five five six gas guns is, you know, good enough is is kind of the standard, right? Like like two three MOA or better whatever we can get it done with it and that's absolutely true you most most likely for the things you're going to ask most rifles to do uh you can this one though um is doing stuff that frankly uh i've, I've never seen a 16 inch 556 five, gas gun do uh not from a manufacturer right so you, you can definitely get a 16 inch 556 five, gas gun to do these things but you're gonna have to build it because nobody else builds it um this one is, is ready to go you order it, it's got the trigger, it's got the safety, it's got the stock, it's got the grip, it's got the gas. It says, it, throw an optic on it and go shoot some stuff, man. Um, outside of that, that's what I got for you. Dude. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, if you want to come here and hate on how much it costs, um, I'm going to block you if I can because that's stupid, man. You, you know, go 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 whine and, 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 and bitch and moan about how much Lamborghinis cost or something. You know what I mean? Like, th this is a freaking race car, man, and it's the best race car that's being made right now. Um, if, if it doesn't matter to you whether your gun does what this one will do or not, then I'm sure that it sounds like it's a little bit higher price once you go to the website. But if you want what this gun can do and you want the backing of a well-known, very respected brand in this industry to be able to take care of you, you know, um, then, then maybe you want this, right? Again, you, you, I, I don't know where you can find this ready to go out of the box, okay? Um, I don't know where you can find it. I know you can build something similar, right? But but you can't build this this rail uh, uh, setup. You can't build the ability for the gun to not shift under pressure. You can't uh, get get a company to back you up whenever something goes wrong with it, if something goes wrong with it. Um, and I just really like it, man. I really like it. If you don't, that's fine. And it got to be emotional, dude. Um, but yeah, don't don't be on there uh, bashing my boys, man. So uh, 
other than that, dude, that's what I got. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys uh, give something to think about, man. And, uh, of course, if you're ever at a class, uh, you're more than welcome to shoot this thing if I got it with me and, and try it out, take it, take it for a test run. Um, and if you're a JBS Training Group alumni, there was just a code that was entered into the JBS Training Group alumni Facebook page that gets you uh, a little bit of a little bit of coin saved on this thing. Ha <laughs> ha! So that's what I got, man. Hope y'all have a good rest of the day. Bye.